So a couple of months ago, I got COVID and I was away from home, so I was quarantined in this cute little cottage for 10 days. Um, I got bored pretty quickly. And so while I was there, I started looking around and just was looking at objects and decided to take the everyday objects that were around me and make something from them. So you can see me here, I'm taking these objects, which is a peanut butter container, a creamer, and a spent pudding container, and tracing the tops of these onto a piece of paper. And from here, I scan them into my computer, and then once I have them scanned in, then I bring them into Illustrator. And in Illustrator, what I start doing is creating the shapes from those pieces and starting to tweak the edges and play with them a bit because my drawing is kind of lackluster. So I'm just taking those pieces and trying to make actual shapes from them that I can use for this project. And what I'm going to be making here is a retro style clock. So I need to take all these ugly edges and stuff from my drawing that were scanned in and actually make them into a better shape. So I'm just in here tweaking the paths and stuff like that to, to get everything to line up the way I need it. Now once I have those done in Illustrator, I then take those into the Glowforge app itself and I make outlines of the objects. You can see me doing that there. And then once I've created the outlines, I'm starting to resize and tweak and move them around a little bit so they get to be where I want them and the shapes they I want them to be and the sizes that I want them to be. So I'm scaling them up from their original size that I had in Illustrator. And now I'm adding the uh, center holes for which are going to be used for the cutouts. I'm not actually going to use these for the actual cutouts. So I'm going to remake those once I resize them, but just to do it and line them up. You know, you got to have a little fun while you're doing the not this stuff like making shapes and lining things up and stuff like that. So here you can see me just lining things up, make sure everything's landing where I want it to. I'm um, adjusting the holes where I want them to. And now just setting the cut pass for the Glowforge. And now exporting that to SVG so I can just double check it. And here I am taking a clock kit. A uh, simple cheap little clock kit. I'll have this uh, linked in the video. And now I'm starting to measure the posts for the clock kit so I can rearrange those holes and recreate them to be the exact size that they need to be. Here I was looking at the second hands that came with this clock kit. I've been trying to see if I can extract that little brass pin that goes in the front. And it would have been not terribly difficult, but it would have been extra work that I didn't want to do. So I found one that was free from everything else in case you weren't using a second hand, just using the hour and minute hands. So I found one and it was uh, covered with black enamel. So I'm just going through and scraping this. I started on 220 to remove the paint. Now I'm doing it on 1500 and then 3000 grit paper to shiny it up. And sizing up the post, make sure I have that right, make sure it fits, there we go. All right, now over the Glowforge, time to cut this out and see what this thing looks like. And I didn't do it off camera, but you can see the holes are different sizes there. I just went into Illustrator, used the ellipse tool and created circles that were those dimensions in millimeters. So you didn't really miss much. All right, now that I have my test pieces, I'm fitting them up and see how they work. Looks pretty good. It's a little loose, but I'm okay with that. What I'm doing here is I'm actually taking the hands that were there, and then they have uh, this little collar on them that you can use for the pieces that actually kind of locks them into place. So what I'm doing is since I don't need those hands for anything, I'm going to take those Using my wire cutters here, I'm just going to chomp off the hands themselves from the little piece and then clean them up a bit on the 220 sandpaper. This is just cheap aluminum. Do the other one here, clean that up, and you'll see me put those on in the next step. So right here, now I'm taking my walnut, my giant piece of cherry that I have, and some maple 
and I'm testing these out to see kind of how they look together and what orientation I want to have them. Do I want to have the maple on the back, the walnut in the middle, cherry in the front, and so forth. So I'm just trying to take a look and see the pattern, how I like the wood and how it lays. Now that I've done that, I'm going to start cutting it out. Decided to go with the walnut piece for the background. This is our awesome. Alright, and since it's a giant piece of cherry, I need to get a uh, work stand in there to actually support the other end of it. I'm cutting out my little piece of cherry here for the hour hand. And on the maple, doing the minute hand. And now that I've done this, I just need to go through and cut where it didn't actually cut all the way through on the material, just so it doesn't uh, splinter out when I'm trying to do it. Now I'm just cleaning up the edges. And that right there, that's my burnishing block. Um, it's just a piece of foam that I got in a package with a piece of old shirt um, spray adhesive to it. And that helps burnish the edges and clean them up so it's not flaky stuff and it, it, it works the edges. So it seals the edges up so they don't have, it, it, you know, it, it burnishes them. What, do you need more than that? Come on. Um, now just pulling off the paper, trying to put those on, cleaning up the edges with a little sandpaper, and the burnishing tool. Now, um, using denatured alcohol, and I, that's a little block that I made. It's just a piece of uh, cloth stretched between two pieces of wood, screwed on in there on top of a dry erase board. Um, and I'm cleaning up with some denatured alcohol, and that gets rid of all the burn marks. You see what we have on the back side of that piece. So those are the burn marks that you get from the Glowforge. Uh, so I'm just cleaning those up. And you can see me here putting those clock hand pieces into selected place there that hole needed to be cleaned up a little bit so I'm using my Jimmy DeResta ice pick and then going through and putting those on with some super glue always good to sand a little bit before you put down any super glue so it has some tooth to bite cleaning up some activator or not cleaning up adding up some activator to set the curing on the crazy glue All right, now it's assembly time. There we go, just testing that the hands work. Voila, my retro style kitchen clock. <laughs>